Wow, what's good everybody? It's your boy D1 and you can check me out on the Bootleg Kev Podcast. Yo, Bootleg Kev Podcast, man. Special guest in here. My guy D1 is in the building. Yes, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, 12 years later. For sure. <laughs> bro, we first linked up in 2012. I was on tour with Macklemore. We stopped through Tucson or Phoenix. It was Phoenix. It was like 10p. Yep. Somehow, some way. Some venue called the Clubhouse, yeah. Yep. And I ended up at the what radio was that? Station. Was that was like right when like the thrift shop. thrift shop started to pop? It was kind of like it started to pop in the middle of that tour. Literally, bro. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So it was like that, by the time that tour ended, Macklemore was a superstar. Bro, that tour was crazy. We were doing like 1,500, 2,000 cap venues at the beginning of the tour. Mm-hmm. By the end of the tour, they were like, hey, we about to run this tour back. And this time we're doing full arenas. You that know shit's I mean? crazy. Yeah. So that's when we met, bro. So yeah. thank you even back then for rocking with me. I don't know. I was independent. So maybe you just saw me opening up for him and you were like, oh, this dude seemed dope. Well, I think you were doing your thing too. Like, I think I remember just seeing you on like. Back then, it was like the blog game was yep. still imperative. Two dope boys. Two dope nah, boys. right. Two, yeah, shout out to Shake and Mech and those guys. Two dope boys was my site, man. I'd go there. Sam like, Hill. I'd be like, yo, I got similar taste to these guys. So, mm. and it was crazy too because we talked about like gatekeepers before we were recording. I actually like respected those quote unquote gatekeepers a lot more than I respect like this algorithmic playlist. Sh- like mm-hmm. situation that's happening because at least like I feel like those guys, whether it was SK or or mm-hmm. Shake or whoever, mm-hmm. like they really had like, like taste. They had taste. They had taste. Now it's just mind control. Yeah, playlists ain't nothing but mind control. But back then, it was literally people who love music, who are like, if it moves me. If I like it, it's getting posted. It don't you, matter how big it is. There you go. It don't matter what label is pushing it to For me. For sure. You know what I mean. There was integrity. Mm-hmm. There was integrity back then. And it's crazy, too, because there were more gatekeepers then, per se, during the blog era. But those dudes, at the very least, had, like, in my opinion, like, great taste. Mm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I found so many artists on those sites that were, like, ground-level artists. You know Bro, what I'm like, I am who I am today because of blog era hip-hop. So, the allhiphop.coms of the world. Shout-out to my man Chuck. Chuck, Chuck the Shake and yeah. Meccas from Two Dope Boys. The, um... Uh, Tuma Basa from MTV mm-hmm. Jams. You heard Charles me back Tuma, then. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, She's at crazy. YouTube Music now, right? Yeah, yeah. John Gotti from The Smoking Section. Yo, I love The Smoking... Bro, speaking of guys, The Smoking Section was one of my sh- fucking favorite sites. Yeah, bro. I found, like, Ritz on there. Who mm-hmm. else? I found a lot of, like... That was a good time, man. That was a good time, bro. So, we're like, like now that there's... Because we're talking about gatekeepers. Because you've been through kind of, like, I would say a lot of iterations of like what it means to be an artist in terms of like your experiences with the industry right because mm-hmm. you've been on a major label as I well have. um and now you're back to kind of are you you're fully independent fully again? independent um would what would you say is the being a part of so many eras of the music industry what would you say is the most like fruitful way for an artist to kind of pop from because like now you see guys like la russell Kind of re envisioning what it means to be independent. Yeah. Um, you know, there's offer based shows and uh-huh. Uh-huh. E- there's a website called Even. People are just selling music. Straight. Name your own price for the for the music. Correct. Right. Correct. And so it just seems like there's like this like quiet revolution happening like against the machine. But like, is it is it better than when it was like when you got in? Yes, and- because there's middle class rap now. Mm-hmm. Back then they didn't have middle class rap. You were either a mega superstar or you were a starving artist trying mm. to make it. Now there's all these artists who are making six figures a year, even a cool seven figures a year, you heard me? And half the game might not even know who they are, but they just super serve their fan base. They know what their niche is, you feel me? And they super serve them. There's people like me and like LaRussell who will go direct to consumer with our music. I don't, I don't ever put my music out directly to the DSPs. At this point, I go on my website first, and I tell all my diehards, come to D1music.com, you heard me? Name your own price if you want the album. So my new album that I just put out is called Loaded. It debuted at number two in the world on the hip-hop charts behind Eminem. On iTunes. Yeah, on iTunes, right? Behind Eminem. Number two in the world, independent, right? 
That album had been out for three months on my website on your site. beforehand. Yeah. Wow. So it's so, like your fans got it first. Yeah, my, my diehards got it first. People paying up to a thousand dollars for the album, Kev. Right. Like literally multiple people. A thousand here, a thousand there, five hundred here, two fifty there, ten dollars here, twenty dollars there. But you add that up, now when I put it on streaming, to still do those type of numbers and make that type of impact on streaming is powerful, you know what I mean? And the album consists of, let me see, I had Fredo Bang featured on the album. Um, you know Fredo? I think you I interviewed Fredo. I love Fredo. Fredo. Great guy, man. That's yeah. my former middle school student. Wow. I used to be his teacher. What? Yeah, back in Baton Rouge. Yeah, brother. So crazy. Like, Fredo is on the album. That's love. That's a relationship. Project Pat is on the album. You heard me? That's love. That's a relationship. My brother Starlito is on the album. You heard me? That's love. Uh, Shout out to Starlito. Very yeah. slept on dude, man. Shout out to Nashville. Yeah, bro. So... This feels like the best era ever to where if you are willing to work hard before it was working hard, but still having to go through gatekeepers. Now with social media, you can go directly to the people. And when you form a connection with the people, they don't care who you sign to. Mm -hmm. They don't care what other artists are co-signing you. You know, there was an era where you had to have a big co-sign right. to really get in. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that anymore. So if you're willing to work hard and if you got a product that the fans could tell, man, I love your art, but I love your heart, they're going to lock in with you, bro. And that's the key to my longevity. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it feels like, you know, there's there's almost uh, artists are so ignorant. I feel like there's dope independent artists who are even ignorant to the possibility of like doing that as opposed to they're chasing playlists. They're chasing the wrong shit where it's like yo if you even got like a hundred people rocking with you a hundred mm. people that's that's mm. enough to pay the bills straight up you know what i mean straight up straight up if you got a hundred people spending a hundred dollars a year with you that's 10 racks yeah all for just a hundred people uh, yeah for right? sure if you get a thousand people to spend a hundred dollars a year with you that's a hundred racks bro yeah. people don't want to think about it like that because the playlist is what has been glamorized right just for everybody watching this, I've been on the big playlist. I'm on them right now as we speak. I'm sure some of my singles are on some of these big playlists as we speak. That stuff don't change your life, man. That's somebody working out in the gym or just with their uh, music playing at the crib. They're not and engaged. They're not even super on. Shit engaged. comes on. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's on. And then, like, you're making minimal money off of i think uh it's 3800 some odd dollars off of a million streams yeah so you're making one third of a penny for every individual stream so yeah. then you do the math and i believe like you said on a million streams that might come out to like 3800 dollars bro if somebody listen to my music a million times bro i better be making more than that no it's 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 it's, it's actually crazy it's mm. like i feel like there has to and then uh, there are major labels who have ownership stake in in some of the playlists or in some in of Spotify. the DSPs. That you go in Spotify, yeah, and so it's yeah. like at what point in time is this whole thing like rigged against like an artist that isn't on in that system? I wouldn't say rigged, but it's very, very almost damn near impossible, yeah, to make a career off of music if you're just depending on like the conventional streaming income, DSPs, DSP income, like oh, you're, you're cooked Kev. unless you win the lottery, Kev. I think I got, I think I counted about. 13 income streams that I have just off of music. Yeah. I'm going to try to recall them right now. So we got streaming royalties. We got publishing. Yep. We got direct to consumer, name your own price money. We got uh, concerts. Mm -hmm. We got merch. Mm -hmm. We got speaking engagements. Currently, I'm a college professor. I'm at Harvard University and a professor at Tufts University in Boston. I teach a course called The Intersection of Hip Hop and Social Change. So teaching, you know what I mean? You got... um. You got features, collabs, mm -hmm. you feel me? You got uh, brand partnerships and endorsements when you can get those. That's yeah. nine right there. You got, um. I know I'm forgetting some more because I always think about them. That's an easy off the top of my head, quick nine yeah. right there. You know what I mean? Oh, you got sync licensing. Yep, syncing is big. Yeah, yeah, when you get your song uh, synced in movies and in commercials and all that. And this type of stuff, uh, I don't know if I said speaking engagements. Maybe I you did. did. You did. Yeah, but... <laughs> but this is just a quick little ten piece that I named. You know what I mean? Some artists are just super focused on just one, yep. one, one stream of income. It ain't supposed to be like that no more, man. Um, uh, you got podcasting. I just launched my first episode of my podcast today. Oh, congrats! It's called Flipping Tables with D One. You heard me? Because uh, so much has been happening 
over the past year, I don't know how much you've been keeping up, man, but I've been in some pretty high profile uh, back and forth. Back and forth. I think it was what Meek and Rick Ross, right? Yeah, yeah. Jim Jones, Meek Mill, Rick Ross, then Joe Budden chimed in, and it didn't feel fair to me that a brother like Joe Budden, who I never met before. Would, I heard you call him out on the new record, yeah on yeah. a new song yeah because he had three full podcast episodes where I'm a topic of discussion of his you know mm-hmm. and he gets to in long form uh, content gets to speak his piece about who he thinks D1 is and how he thinks D1 is just a clout chaser and not mm-hmm. legit and da 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 and speaking down on even my faith you heard me the fact that I'm Christian and right. all this type of stuff and I was like dang. Based on the way I put content out, all I got is songs and maybe 90-second reels on Instagram. Instagram. So I love the fact of, and salute to you even for, with podcasting, when you're really a thinker, you hear me? Like, you're really a thinker and a listener. So it it allows you to have these longer conversations to where you can understand someone's heart and their thought process behind what they're doing. Yeah, it's almost like when you watch, like, uh, the news Mm -hmm. and people, like, form opinions based on, like, Four people on TV trying to each get in their 45 second point as mm-hmm. opposed to like listening to like a politician or somebody speak on like a long form co- conversation where mm-hmm. you could get like further understanding. It's the same shit. It's like, like, like you said, like now you can articulate your points in a greater way if you have your own podcast. And then Kendrick Lamar just threw me the alley oop of all alley oops last week. You heard me? Shout nah, the Kendrick shit's crazy. Like, where were you when you when you heard I was on, it? I was on Instagram Live. Yeah, uh, on Instagram Live because my city, New Orleans, was very mad with me. I was like public enemy number one last week to New Orleans because when the announcement came out that Kendrick was performing at the Super Bowl, uh, so many people in New Orleans were mad, super upset that it wasn't Lil Wayne. I saw, I noticed. Yeah, yeah. And I'm from New Orleans. You of know, that's you my are. hometown, yeah. man. For me to say like, yo, like let's keep it a buck. You heard me? Like, where's this sense of entitlement coming from? Like, the artist has to be somebody from New Orleans just because the Super Bowl is right. here. Number one and number two, I was keeping it a hundred. I'm a former middle school teacher. I'm a pro- college professor. I'm a dude whose hip hop music is clearly message driven. You right. know what I'm saying? It, it got message mixed in with dope beats and, and dope flow and all that. So when we talk about the message, I was like, let's keep it 100 about the message that Wayne has often glorified mm-hmm. in his music. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, is that something that is necessarily conducive to a 100 million plus audience who's going to be watching the Super Bowl halftime? Right. And just me saying that, bro, it's the same stuff I was saying with Rick Ross. And, and, and you know, back then, uh, almost a year ago. Right. And the city had my back then, but now, now because it applied to somebody from the city. I just said, like, obviously Wayne's a legend, but I think, like, if you just, if you're the Super Bowl and you're the NFL, mm-hmm. like, he just did WrestleMania and forgot a lot of his lyrics, and it was it was a less than best performance. And, like, he's just had, like, interesting onstage situations over the last few years where he's, like, walked off. And, like, mm-hmm. I just don't know if I'm, like... Yo, like, Kendrick also happens to be, like, the number, I mean, like, having a crazy year. Yeah. And he's Kendrick Lamar. Like, yeah, what are bro. we talking about? Like, yeah. over the last t- decade, like, that's the move. He's been a glitch in the Matrix in that he clearly has a message in his music that's about pushing things forward in life, right? Progressive. Sure. But has become as mainstream as you could get. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's and he's that's always rare. And he's always been that. That's rare, bro. It's never, he's never not done what he is doing so what message do we want to send to the kids at home do we want to send a message that like it's possible to stand for something you know to have some morals values and principles and make it and make it right that's a fire message to send you hear me so when i got the announcement that kendrick shouted me out in his new song i was on instagram live explaining this to a lot of people in my city who were mad at my commentary on the super bowl and all of a sudden the comments got flooded with a wave of new people saying, Kendrick Lamar just shouted you out. Oh, Yo, so Kendrick fire. just mentioned you. So I didn't know if it was real or not, but I was like, whether or not that's real, I t- they say, he's giving you your flowers. This is amazing. I said, the thing about flowers, y'all, is that flowers eventually die. Mm. I said, so if it's true what y'all are saying, salute to Kendrick. I love you, my brother. Thank you. But I want everybody watching this live to know that I do this for the approval of somebody that ain't that ain't even here, and that's God. You feel right. me? Because for me, I've had the approval from the bootleg Cavs, now the Kendrick Lamars, the fans. But I see how quick them same fans will turn on you. For sure. So when they talk about like you getting these flowers and you supposed to be just 
almost like mama i made it type of moment i just know how to not get too high on the highs and mm -hmm. not get too low on the lows you know people should do that in life in life bro like yeah. I, so i was like yo it's, it's amazing that in the same week i'm experiencing condemnation from my city mm -hmm. everything from people making death threats to saying you can't come back to the city and you canceled in new orleans and all this stuff to elevation and validation right. from kendrick saying I want to be empathetic, a heart like D1. You know what I'm saying? I want to I know what he was, what the end of that line was because he stopped. What you think it was? I don't know. But it was, I, 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 well, he said, but I will. He said, I want to be empathetic. But I like, will. But I will. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So you could imagine. No, nah, for like. sure. No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I thought that was super dope, though. So for you, like, um, like you said, man, like, I feel like you've, Always been pushing positivity, always been very, very, like, ahead of the curve in terms of, like, I mean, not even ahead of the curve. You've always been, like, integrity first as a person and, you know, as an artist and as everything else comes after that, right? But I wonder for you, like, does that just feel good knowing that, like, man, you just, you, you've you gone, gone through it with, you know, Meek Mill, Rick Ross, and, and, and people, you know, saying A, B, and C about you, but to, like, have the guy... You know, in my opinion, you know, I've had Kendrick in my top five for probably like six years. Uh, and I think after this last 12 months, it's either him or Hove as the, the GOAT, you know, mm. if I'm being honest. Like, mm. personally, for my list, I always had him around four or five. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think he's, you know, when it's all said and done, I think he's going to be the greatest of all time, you know, with all due respect to Jay-Z. But uh, what's that feel like, though, man? Like, it's just, it's validation that, even when people try to tell me that I'm crazy or that I could go further, faster, if I switch my message right. up, it's just like, it's proof that the people who y'all look up to and the people who y'all might feel like can do no wrong in y'all eyes, those people are actually saluting a brother that's just been consistent the whole time. And that it's like, hey, he's going to get where he's destined to be in the time he was destined to be there. Because I've always put impact over income. You know what I mean? You get into this game, and if you're seeking out, man, just today, bro. So Kevin Lyles stepped down uh, as yeah. at, from uh, 300 Entertainment yeah. or, or uh, as, the, as the head guy. Um, Diddy, they said Diddy is arrested as of yesterday, trying to get out on 50 million. I heard on TMZ they say he offered 50 million dollars bond, uh, bond and to, they denied it, to get out. Yeah. I think they denied it. You know, bro, like the empire is crumbling. The empire as we knew it in hip hop, to where all of this stuff that glorifies what is evil, like like it's evil. We we burying rich homie Quan today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Open casket funeral televised. So we seeing a brother in the culture that's being buried. God bless his soul, you know, and prayers out to his family and friends. We're seeing that happen. And we're seeing people who have been gatekeepers for the longest who have defined what music is going to get the green button pressed and, and get all the marketing dollars put behind it. People who have made it cool to love, to be in love with the jewelry, the money, the music that's glorifying uh drug use mm -hmm. and glorifying the disrespect of women but now we're seeing these people go to jail now we're seeing people that's passing away in front of our face and everybody is saying that was way too soon so it's like now what it can't just be entertainment all the people in the culture who tried to tell me all these years kev man it's just entertainment bro you just always got something to complain about won't you just let people get their money that's what uh that's what Rick, Rick Ross was saying, it's like, yo, I do this music, but I feed my hood turkeys during Thanksgiving, you know? And literally in his mind, that justifies making the soundtrack to selling dope and rapping about the glorification of murder and disrespecting women and all that. And it's like, are you serious, bro? In your mind, it makes sense because this is just how I feed my family. But then over here, here's the good I'm doing in the community. We got to have these difficult conversations in the culture right now. Well, let me ask you this, right? Because obviously hip hop is built on kind of like, you know, if we go back to like, you know, even like early Biggie, Ten Crack Commandments or, you know, Nas kind of talking about like what it was like to witness growing up in Queensbridge and a lot of the, you know, it, it's, it's always been built on street imagery. And, um, you know, there's an argument to be made that if like, that's Rick Ross's truth. That's how, that's his life. And I'm not saying it is or not. I don't want to speculate on 
Rick Ross's criminal history or what what is true or not. But let's say, hypothetically speaking, Rick Ross is just speaking his truth, his life experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if that life experience equals drug use or selling drugs or committing crime or being wrapped up in the streets, that is his outlet. And, and we're just saying Rick Ross's name because you could probably apply that to a hundred other artists, right? Yeah. But there's a, the, the argument would be that like, that's their experience, that's their life and their outlet to ex express their life and where they come from is the music. So their music is where they're going to talk about that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a difference between narration and glorification. I don't, listen, that, that, that's a fair argument. Mm -hmm. um, would, but my, my thing is, is I think like those conversations just need to be had. And I think that, you know, there's a way to like, for you to, I mean, I, I, I'd be dope if you like, you have a podcast right mm -hmm. now, which is dope. I think it'd be just dope for you to like, even have some off the camera conversations with some of these guys mm. where you guys can kind of just come to like a certain understanding. And like, it's like, you know, I think you had, I said, I said, I had said, uh, or seen something you had said about sexy red, if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Um, and like, look, there is a truth that like um, young girls are influenced by Sexy Red, mm -hmm. right? And if it's Sexy Red or it's, you know, Lado, whoever it is, whoever, right? Like the totality of all of that music and what's being pushed, it does have some sort of effect on the culture. But ha hasn't it always had that? Like if you go back to Little Kim mm -hmm. or you go back to Foxy Brown mm -hmm. or, you know, it, it, and I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, but it's mm -hmm. this isn't new, right? Mm hmm. Correct. Like, what, what makes Sexy Red different from, like, what Lil' Kim was doing? Yeah, you know what the difference is? Hip-hop has gotten older. So because hip-hop has gotten older, you have OGs in hip-hop now. So for every Sexy Red that's in her 20s, you got somebody that's in their 40s or maybe their 50s who's been there, done that. And the role of OGs in the culture should be the role of OGs in life which right. is we're here to mentor you and make it to where your learning curve can be even quicker than ours was right because we can pour into you the problem with hip-hop is you have ogs who are actually dgs i call them disappointing grown-ups you know what i mean <laughs> that's a hey that's some real shit right there straight up dog for sure these ogs are really dgs and and the reason why is because they want to be relevant with the younger generation, so much so that they'll sacrifice their knowledge that they've attained by living life for 30 plus years more than these younger artists. Mm -hmm. And they'll sacrifice that or they'll sacrifice their integrity and they'll employ something called willful ignorance, meaning these older people in the culture, these older executives, these older artists who know better still choose to glorify things that they know are harmful. Right. And they know it's harmful, but they're like, dang, that's what the youngins want to hear. And, and like, like, I'm not sh like, it's, it's, it's like this, like you said, like there's at the end of the day, we're in the music business mm. and what's good for business isn't always good for the people. There you, there you go. Keep going. Keep going. All right. So if Unpacked what's it. good for business isn't always good for the people and people got to pay their bills. Stop. People got to pay their bills. Kev. My thing is, when I talk about these executives, you heard me, Kevin Lyles. I'm about to say, how far up on the executive Cohen's, ladder are we going? Because a lot of these guys are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So there you fine. go. Yeah, so yeah. when we talk, so when the excuse becomes people got to pay their bills, when I'm speaking to artists who aren't starving artists, struggling artists, artists who have made it and have become moguls mm -hmm. and have become multimillionaires, as well as these executives, at what point is it like they can't use their excuse, I'm just trying to pay my bills? No, 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 because I'm, I'm talking about, like, on a, on a lower level, like, let's say somebody has a production company, mm -hmm. and they find Sexy Red, mm -hmm. and they, oh, look, look, I got this artist who's bubbling in St. Louis, I'm gonna, and then from there it goes into the, the, the bigger, you know, totality of the system or whatever. I, I think that, like I said, I think there has to be some sort of balance, and I feel like, for whatever reason, man, this beef with Drake and the, and the way Kendrick kind of just pulled the mask off and the onion each layer of the onion and, and on, on the on drake's like this whole shit i feel like has kind of like sparked like a ripple of like consciousness yeah and 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 it's been and, and you know i just i just uh, met common and pete rock uh for well, well I, I met him before but I, I just had a conversation with them and i just think common like i almost cried thinking him because i was like bro when i was a kid bro like you don't understand like you know and then I was talking about like when I was a kid, we had whatever you were looking for that was in music, right? But what we did have that I don't see 
at least being pushed in the same way back in the day there was like raucous records and like there was like a semi commercial outlet that people could find conscious music mm -hmm. like talib and common and like most deaf like those guys weren't necessarily like commercial but they were like accessible like people kind of knew them like you could open up double xl magazine and see a write-up on those guys right yeah or you could listen to like immortal technique mm. and like when i was a kid like i learned so much shit about um like the cia and all kind of crazy shit just because immortal technique was there <laughs> for real straight up and like i like like right now like the people doing that type of shit whether it's yourself or whether it's artists who it's just there's just not like there it, it's not as easily accessible to the kids because it's not tiktokable you know what i'm saying right, like right. like it's not it's not algorithm friendly mm, right you know what i'm saying like what's going yeah. on like like right now with like in gaza and shit i'm like yo who's the like big artist i'm not talking about the artist who's like super underground i'm talking about who's like like there's not a big artist who's made a like Macklemore though. Shout out to fucking Macklemore. Mm -hmm. Respect to him. Mm -hmm. But like, who's the artist that's gonna step up and like speak on that shit in a verse or mm -hmm. something? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, or like educate or or you know what I mean? Just stand up and be like, yeah, like this is crazy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so I feel like when I was a kid, we had the Commons, we had mm -hmm. Immortal Technique, and I don't know. Not to say that 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 there isn't people out there that are doing that, but it's almost like so much more suppressed. You know what I'm saying? If you master the art of cooking up and concocting delicious poison and you know how to cook it up, then how to serve it to the people and serve it to the fan base that exists all around this country, what happens is they develop a taste for what actually contains a poisonous message, but because it's been force fed to them and it's cooked so carefully with the flow, with the beat, with the hook, with the marketing machine behind it. Now, when you offer the people something different, they look at that like, oh, that's that's nasty. Right. So that's where artists who are truth tellers, such as myself, people that are on a bigger mission, making purpose driven music. You know what I'm saying? That right there becomes something where we have to master the art of still giving people was delicious to them, which is the beat, which is the flow, right. which is the catchiness of the hook, which is the charisma. The melody, whatever, yeah. There you go. Yeah. But along with the message. And that part right there is something that I don't think a lot of artists are up for that challenge because they just feel like, man, I'm trying to do something to make this world a better place. Shouldn't my job be easy? No. Mm. It's never been that way. Anybody that has a heavy calling on their life that's meant to be a voice for the people, right. you might not be well liked down here. Right. You might have your people turn their back on you down here and you still have to keep going because you know that this movement is bigger than you. Mm -hmm. The mission is bigger than your motion. Got to stop the interview. Got to shout out to our partners. Blue Chew. That's right, baby. Um, listen, Blue Chew. A lot of people keep asking, what is Blue Chew? Does it work? Uh, Blue Chew is amazing. It's an online service. It delivers the same active ingredients right to you as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra at a fraction of the cost in a chewable form. Uh, now, this is all you got to do. No awkward doctor's appointments. It's all handled online, delivered to your door in discreet packaging. Go to BlueChew.com, all right? Make sure you go sign up right now, BlueChew.com. Use the promo code BOOTLEG, and you will get one month for free to try for yourself all you got to do is pay five dollars in shipping um it's all online it's amazing man and when i tell you uh, it works oh it works yeah maybe you're dealing with erectile dysfunction maybe you just need a little extra pep in your step with uh, your wife or maybe uh you know you just want to see uh be all you could be we'll say huh how about that bluechew.com uh same active ingredients as viagra levitra and cialis at a fraction of the cost in a chewable form it is amazing you're gonna be lit your thing's gonna be as i like to say do the uh Designer ad libs. All right. Oh, uh, man. Look, this is what you got to do. Try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code bootleg at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code bootleg to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we want to give a shout out to Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Also, want to give a shout out to my bookie. Football season is here. Oh, my favorite part of the year to uh, put a little action 
on some sports, all right? And this is what's dope about MyBookie. You go sign up right now, mybookie.ag. Use that promo code bootleg and get your first deposit bonus. And you can bet on anything, anywhere, anytime. College football, NFL, baseball. They also got the full casino. You're in the roulette if you're in the slots. If you're into uh, maybe a little blackjack with the live dealer, you can do it all. And MyBookie, use the promo code bootleg, though, when you sign up for a new account. Bootleg is the promo code. You'll get a first deposit bonus. And uh, this is why it's so amazing. Right now, let's say you put a, a bet on, um, I don't know, let's say a four-leg parlay on a, on a Sunday. Let's say three of the four hit, but the fourth one hasn't happened because of Sunday night football. You can cash out your parlay early and take the three of the four and get the same odds if it would have been a three-team parlay. Take that money and run or risk it. You got parlays. Same day cash outs, all of that. It all goes down. MyBookie.ag. Sign up right now with that promo code bootleg for that first deposit bonus. Let's get back to the interview. Let me ask you this, though. So there are artists. We'll bring up Fredo Bang, right? You talk about right. middle school. Yeah. Fredo's a good friend of the show. Good friend. I just was talking to him last week. Um, somebody who has been dope to watch him kind of mature as like a grown man yeah. over the last like three or four years. Um, but without music, right? Without the music that made him like initially successful, which was a lot of like negative, violent street music, right? He has public beefs with people and, you know, neither here nor there. But without that music, right, are we sure he'd be around? Are we sure he'd have, he'd have made it out of, out of Baton Rouge? Are we sure he'd have a, a future? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I do feel like with some of these artists, it's like the music that is negative is what's keeping them alive mm. and what's giving them an opportunity to like, Maybe grow up, get money in their pocket, change. Mm. Um, you know, I think of a guy like G Herbo, who I've also seen just become like one of the sharpest dudes in the music industry. If you have a conversation with G Herbo, you'd be like, damn, this dude is fucking on it. Like he started off as a kid, like a drill rapper, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And so I feel like, what do you say to that? Like, yes, there's obviously, you know, what you would call poison in a lot of this music, but a lot of this music, if it didn't exist, a lot of these dudes would be dead mm. or would be in prison. So the reality is, at a certain point, those artists are going to come to where they aren't in their twenties anymore. For sure, you know, and they are fathers now, and they have kids they're raising. So what happens is they have to have people who are pouring into them, which is why I have a relationship with Fredo, and I literally love that dude. Like he, no, he's great. He's one of the best dudes, and like, like he's such a nice dude, man. And like he, he gets it for real. Like, so, so when you know that someone has such a great heart, right? Right. And, and it's so artistically talented and, and so giving and so selfless, right? When you know that and you also know that there's an industry that does not care about his forward progression. They don't care about his evolution. As a man. As a man. Right. Correct. They just care about even fans. So much pressure comes from fans because the fans don't be wanting the artists to evolve. No, they don't want them to grow. They want them for what they know them for. There you go. So that puts all of these artists in a very precarious position, Kev, to where at a certain point they feel like, man, I've grown out of that season of my life, mm. but there's so much pressure from the fans and from the industry to keep me held down there. That's where they have to have other people, and hopefully I can be one of them to show them that it's possible to grow. Peace is profitable. Mm. Positivity is profitable. It don't have to be lame. It don't have to mean that you fall off the face of the earth. And it's going to require a transition when you started out one way, but you grew out of that. But thank the Lord for growth. Because how many people didn't get to grow out of that season? Right. You know, how many people got caught up in the beef to the point where they couldn't come back from it? You know, mm -hmm. so I look at it like these brothers and sisters need to realize how much of an opportunity they have to grow and evolve and there's so many artists who they end up not having the, the the ingenuity or the courage that it takes or the grit that it takes to say i'm gonna evolve even if i lose some of y'all along the way because not all fans are good mm. not all, not all attention is good not all money is good bro so for like a lot of these younger kids there's kids getting signed 17 18 19 20 years old right uh would you say that it's on because it's. I don't think you're ever going to see a point in time where label execs give a fuck enough about the artist to try to pull them inside and say, hey, I don't think we should release this disc record. Mm. That's never going to happen. Correct. Um, so is it like hmm. on the 
you, you know, it, it, shit gets weird. Artists get signed, they get new management, there's new people on their team. I, if you're a, I think, you know, I think about Fulio and, uh, and Young and Ace, right? And I, I, dude, I mean, the last time I interviewed Fulio, I was like, dude, like, I feel like I'm going to wake up one day and you're just going to be dead. Like, you know, you, gonna, you say that? Yeah, I said in an interview with him, I was like, yo, like, when's this shit going to stop? Like, like one day I, I'm afraid I'm going to open up academics page and it's going to say you got killed. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I was like, where's the line? Because mm. these, like, that, to me, that, those two and their beef was so disrespectful and every single per possible line you could cross was crossed. It was just inevitable that more people were going to die. Mm -hmm. And it's like, who's behind each one of these artists that is like mm -hmm. not stepping in and being like, yo, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, but if, if it's also good for business. Okay. I just had an idea, Kev. This is accountability is the word, right? We need some level of accountability. For in, sure. Inside of yeah. Like if you do some stupid shit. Right. If you if you write a check, someone's gonna cash that motherfucker. There you go. So let's let's talk. Let's be solution based right now and figure out what would accountability look like from each end of the industry. So in my college course, I teach about the three C's: creators, consumers, and commissioners. Right in the game, you got artists, you got fans, and you got label people and media people. So what does accountability look like from an artist standpoint? Like, what can we say? Like, come on, man. That's the difference between telling your story and saying some, like you said, some dangerous ish that could have real life implications. You know, what does that accountability look like? For me, what it looks like is now that we have OGs in hip hop, it looks like artists being able to come together and say, you know what? Yes, the overt glorification of I'm going to walk my op down, I'm spinning the bin, I'm sliding, I'm knocking your head off, da da da. The glorification of murder music needs to stop. Like, we, we need to say that that's going too far. The glorification of using drugs, you know what I'm saying? Like, like drug addict culture inside of music needs to be something that we need to speak out against. To me, that's what the overt glorification of disrespecting women dog like to the point where it's just they're so used to being disrespected right now that they didn't just got to the point where they're numb to even what they hear you know mm -hmm. so for me that's what accountability we just talking about from artists could look like i'm curious as to what because i feel like we, you and i may draw our line in different places but where do you draw the line in terms of what accountability could look like from artists this is what i would say i would say that there are there is a certain aspect of uh being naive and and being a, somebody who is trying to do more of what works and if they see what works for a b c or d yo beef sells right mm. it's always been like that go back to 50 go back to fucking uh ll cool j cannabis whatever beef has always sold mm. it's it's always been good for business so if you're like a young artist and you understand well Maybe when I put out a normal record, I don't see the numbers that this record does. Mm -hmm. I don't think an, I don't think a lot of these kids are mature enough to like take a step back and realize like, well, but what comes with the extra million streams or whatever? I do think, like you said, man, there has to be somebody to kind of step in and be like, yo, we shouldn't put this out. Should that be their manager? I don't know. Right. Should that be an older artist? For me, we talk, you a white man. Yeah. We talk so much about the black community this and the black community that, that we need people in the black community to step in and say, man, that little 17 year old is making them, them, that murder music. That reminds me of who I was 20 years ago. But by the grace of God, I lived to be in my 30s now. I'm going to feel... And I'm a successful artist. I'm going to take it upon myself to pour into that young brother, to plant some positive right. seeds. You know what I mean? I think that that's where the accountability needs to come from. It probably won't come from the managers because all they care about is their 20% commission. Yeah, and they just want to, uh, yo, let's go get an advance because I'm going to get paid even if you never recoup. It's child abuse, bro. A lot of these older managers that hurry up and find an artist. They force an artist into a label deal. Thank that's you. That's a bullshit. Thank because you. Because guess what? For people who don't know, when you get a... You get pushed into a shitty record deal by a manager. It's because that manager's just going to take his piece of that advance. And mm -hmm. he's, he's never got to recoup it. He's not signed to the shitty record label. Thank you. With the shitty terms. It's the kid that's now fucked. So even if in nine months the shit don't work out with the manager and the kid, the manager's scot-free with his money in his pocket. Thank you. That shit happens all the time. I see that shit. I've told that shit to artists where I've been in the studio with them. 
and been like, yo, you, uh, I'll, I'll use a, I don't want to say, air, air did, this is somebody who's not a, a kid, but somebody who was buzzing real hard like three years ago. And they all of a sudden signed to like a, a bigger management company. And I'm someone I'm close with, you know, and they were pushing them to sign to Atlantic. Mm. And this artist was very, I mean, millionaire off of independent music. Sheesh. And I was like, I was like, yo, they're only pushing you to sign that deal. Cause it's, it was like a million dollar advance. advance. I was like, bro, you could put out a hoodie tomorrow and make a million dollars. Like they're, they're pushing you cause they're going to get, they're going to get their piece off of that. And now you're fucked. Cause mm-hmm. now you can't do what got you here, which is drop music freely. And you don't even make the music that makes sense mm-hmm. to be on a major. Mm-hmm. Like I've never heard you put out a record that I said to myself, man, if that was just on a major label, mm-hmm. Bro, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't, mm-hmm. and ended up, still ended up, it wasn't Atlantic that they ended up signing with, but they did end up signing with a major label. Mm-hmm. And shit's hit a wall since then. But I bet you that management yep. got their piece. Yep. And that's all they care about, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. So many people are in these artists' pockets. It's fucking crazy. It's yeah. so crazy. There's like four or five hands in these uh, from every direction, and that's before you even look at a lawyer. Yeah, bro. Because so, you got your lawyer, you got your your booking agent, you got your your day to day. Yep. You got the motherfuckers Business who found manager, you. Yep. You got uh, yep. the, the big manager, the small manager, the, the on production the road company. Man. Bro, you got a production company. You well, it's like these, these like so yeah. many like and, and like look, uh, you know, like I said, man, like a lot of these artists, if they're smart, they grow. Like I just had a conversation with an artist who is finally understanding. That he's getting fucked, okay, and it's like the ve- like now that he, can, he now that he sees it, he can't unsee it. So he's mm. f- he's adjusting, mm. figuring out mm. now that like you know. But most artists is just like they're really gonna trust whoever they sign to mm-hmm. to just guide them through the industry. And a lot of times those motherfuckers give them their own lawyer. Yeah. So if you're a young up and coming artist, yeah, your lawyer represents the people who are fucking you. Absolutely. So Absolutely. If, the, if you're signed to somebody, don't hire the lawyer they suggest. Mm-hmm. Whose best interest is that lawyer's? Mm. Like, come on, like. Mm. So here's another catch twenty two: is you got fans. What level of accountability should fans have in this industry? Because. Bro, one of the worst, most toxic places in hip hop is the comments section. Oh, it's the worst. Especially after somebody dies. For sure. If they had an op, ooh, oh, it's bad. Oh, oh it's bad. It's gruesome, bro. It's it, like it, it makes me cringe to be like, this person really just passed away, and y'all are in this person's comment section just going in, oh, slandering no, I, it's, them. It's, it's it, it almost brings tears to my eyes, bro. Yeah, I mean the fans definitely have some accountability. I think, unfortunately, like. W- w- the consumer base is so numbed to thinking that artists are like video game characters. Yep. And I think a lot of that, it gets wrapped up in like the streaming culture and, 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 and like you could go on YouTube and watch any documentary about some of these YouTube pages be having the most in depth documentaries about beef, beef or, and, and like crazy shit Mm. so these have millions of views Mm -hmm. so these artists are like it's almost like they're watching their favorite tv show play out live Mm. the way you would watch power Mm -hmm. a lot of people are watching these fucking documentaries right yep so they're invested in the storyline of let's say young and ace and julio fulio's beef Mm -hmm. because there's 38 documentaries with millions of views on youtube about it so when somebody dies they don't look at these motherfuckers like people they're looking at them like like people on tv and it's crazy because our culture has produced so much ins- insensitivity to like real life mm. you see it bro people mm. will do anything on, on the streets to get to go viral yep they'll they'll literally check their integrity mm-hmm. at the door mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and do crazy whole shit mm. for a million views mm-hmm. yep They'll get punched. Like, like I be seeing some of this shit, and I'm like, damn, bro. Like, when I was a kid, we had Jackass, and we had Tom Green, and all kind of, mm-hmm. you know, interesting stuff. But nowadays, bro, the, ele- the amount of wild, disrespectful shit that goes mm-hmm. viral is like, I think it's like the Boont Gang kid who I think has gotten saved. Yeah, he got saved. Yeah. yeah. He gave it uh, he's sober. Long. Shout out to, mm-hmm. I think his name's John Cabana. Yeah, John Cabana. That's my dude. A good guy, right? That's my dog. But, like, when he was going viral, mm-hmm. I think... People were seeing how he was going viral, and they're like, oh, I got to do, I got to one-up that. And mm-hmm. he was doing some crazy shit. Mm-hmm. And this is just kind of the world we live in now, mm-hmm. where, like, social media and, like, je- like I'm like Aiden Ross. Mm-hmm. I'm at Dre's, right, mm-hmm. uh, with 50 Cent. This was Saturday, Friday. Mm. 
And Aiden Ross walks up trying to get into VIP, but he's like streaming it, like live on the internet. So he's like living his life for his stream. Mm. And like, shout out to him. He's mm -hmm. making money. Right. You know, whatever. He, he, you know, he's doing well for himself. But like, how many kids are like, okay, if Aiden Ross and Kai Sanat and all these people, they, they're popping. And like, I think I love Kai, by the way. I think Kai's great. I, I think he's hilarious. But like, they're, they're, the, the streaming culture, and I'm not talking about streaming in front of a computer, playing music, reacting. I'm talking about like when you're walking down the street and people are on kick streaming their life live, mm. seeing how many times they can go viral in a day. There's like hundreds of thousands of smaller versions of that that are trying to be the next that, that mm -hmm. are trying to one up and do stupid shit on the internet to yep. try to get attention. Yep. And like I said, dude, I, just, I do think the internet has desensitized us all to like just this is like real life shit. People lose their life. People die. Like, yeah. And we never had that growing up. Like the most totally. we had was like double XL. Mm -hmm. Oh, world star fights, or, you or, know? Or, yeah, or world star. Mm -hmm. But even before that, it was like, you would hear somebody get dissed on a CD that mm -hmm. you had to buy. Mm -hmm. And then you would read about it. Obviously we've lost people, Tupac, Biggie, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it was never like this documented. Mm -hmm. For every time something happens, there's a hundred reaction videos mm, and this mm. internet youtube reaction like crime documentary culture that we live in fans don't they they don't give a fuck about the music mm -hmm. and they don't even fuck about the artists they give a fuck about the drama the storyline that they're engaged in they know more about the storyline of somebody's beep than they do about the, the album that dropped mm -hmm. for a lot of these artists like mm -hmm. obviously there's artists people are engaged with like mm -hmm. you know young boy guys like that but like I just feel like the culture of like content mm. has really like dehumanized not just rappers, but just the fucking world. So here's my theory. My solution is we need to take what we know as hip hop culture. And at this stage, we need to throw it away. Just like I'm from New Orleans. And when we had Hurricane Katrina come through, what we knew New Orleans to be, we had to throw that away because it got swept away. Right. right. And once it got swept away, it didn't take away the identity of New Orleans, but what we knew New Orleans to be got swept away. Right. We need to do that same thing with hip hop, because what we knew hip hop and hip hop culture to be is something that has gotten commandeered and kidnapped and diluted and perverted into something that it's like, wait, it was never intended to be this toxic and be this negative. So we need to just sweep it all away, throw it all away. And still have the identity of what hip-hop is. And just like we had to do in New Orleans after Katrina, we had to rebuild. We need to rebuild hip-hop and keep the positive aspects. Keep the stuff that feels like it's progressive and saying, yeah, we want that to be a part of the culture. But all the stuff that's clearly overtly toxic and negative, we need to throw it away and keep it out, man. Because at this point, we want to make this inclusive room for everything and say, yeah, that's hip-hop. And that's hip-hop, too. And that's hip-hop. And I guess, I mean, I guess when somebody get murdered and making murder music, I guess that's part of hip-hop. But then when somebody doing some positive, we going to be all right. That's hip-hop. But then... This is like, we don't have any standards. So mm -hmm. that's my vote is as long as people are truly wanting to preserve their idea of what hip hop culture is, we're going to be doomed because we didn't do a good enough job being gatekeepers of the culture to allow it to still exist in its purest form. Things can grow, but when you see things growing in the wrong direction, that's when you're supposed to say and do something. The right. problem is... It's been 30 some odd years at this point that it's been growing in, in a direction that I think everyone is like, wait, more rappers getting murdered every year. Wait, this type of music is on the or, rise. Or overdosing. Or overdosing. There you go. Uh, uh, overdose culture and, and all of this. Now we are seeing people we knew as moguls get indicted on charges that go back 20 and 30 years. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Man, we seeing this stuff. We seeing... It's too normal for rappers to be doing jail time and getting killed. This doesn't happen in other genres of music at the rate that is happening in hip hop. Hey, we're about to kick off another interview brought to you by Hardeen. That's right. If you're in Vegas, it's the number one dispensary in the country. The craziest selection of premium cannabis. And uh, all you got to do is shoot them a follow. Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. HardeenLasVegas.com. When you're in Vegas, tell them I sent you. Got to give a shout out to our family at Odd Socks. Oh, look at these Cheeto socks. Oh, my God. Look, OddSocksOfficial.com. 
keyword bootleg and you can get the most comfortable socks in the world. Uh, now, my favorite are the basics. Now, these are the odd socks basics. There's the just, oh, listen, guys, whatever socks you think are, you know, you're buying, they ain't messing with odd socks. Let me just say that. All right. But they also got um, some of the craziest licenses like the Big Lebowski, the best movie of all time, like The Office. Uh, yeah. Lots of office love. Uh, how about a little uh, uh, invader of this? I don't even know what the fuck this is, but it's a good show. Uh, I heard Jurassic Park. Hell of a movie. Look, oddsocksofficial.com. They also got the underwear. Yes, they got the draws, and they are the most comfortable underwear that you could throw on your cheeks, ladies and gentlemen. And you can get it 20% off your entire cart. Unlimited amounts. Oddsocksofficial.com. Yes, they got Dunder Mifflin underwear, ladies and gentlemen. Would you look at those? Oh, yeah. For all my office fans, oddsocksofficial.com. Use that keyword bootleg, and you will save 20% off at checkout. Go do that. Let's get back to the interview for sure. I do think, though, the overdosing aspect, I do think that is a, a overall issue in Just in music. Oh, in the world. In the world. Yeah. Okay. I, I would agree. Because the fentanyl shit has hit the world like it's crazy. Mm. You know, I have no personal people in my life that have overdosed and died that aren't rappers, that just have jobs, you know? Mm. So mm. I think that but 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 again, there's obviously music that pushes drug use and all that. But I gotta ask you this, like, so there is an aspect of like, okay, if you think of like sexy red, right? Mm -hmm. Like I genuinely enjoy sexy red's music. Like mm -hmm. I'm a club DJ. Mm -hmm. So like I see like how much people enjoy her shit. They mm -hmm. dance to it. I mean, women love her music. Um, where is, is there like, like for you in, in, in the world that you're, uh, you know, proposing, is there a space for like just fun music that is not necessarily content heavy? Yes, indeed, bro. Bro. Bro, you don't think it's possible to make fun music that doesn't have to I just like be super ratchet and super raunchy? But but I I think that the ratchetness of some of this music is like like I was just talking to Hurricane Chris, right? And he's from Shreveport. Mm -hmm. And he was saying like he's got a problem with 50. He said because early on before 50 brought his studio there, he said when he brought it, he's going to get rid of the ratchetness. Mm. Like ratchet. And, and they call Shreveport Ratchet City. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the culture of Shreveport. Mm -hmm. Like that music is a part of the culture of Shreveport. Even in New Orleans, the bounce music. Like mm -hmm. back that ass up mm -hmm. is a fucking... Mm -hmm. Quite possibly, I don't know. That might be a top three greatest hip hop song of all time. If you think about just like mm. Mm. that song will never not get played in the club forever for the rest of eternity. eternity. If there's clubs, mm -hmm. juvenile, but back that ass up mm -hmm. from your hometown. Mm -hmm. That's a song about shaking ass, mm -hmm. throwing ass, mm -hmm. but it's an important song. Would you agree or disagree? What has made it important though is that. Whenever you offer something to people, there's always going to be uh, an appetite and a desire for people to have a soundtrack to justify what it is that they're already doing or what they want to do. So when you think about it, music is not supposed to be on the back end, you know, no pun intended, but on the back end of what's going on. Musicians are supposed to be the cultural savants and the leaders to say, where do we want to take our people? You feel me? And that's the problem is musicians have fallen into, well, what do the people want? Whatever the people want, that's what I'm going to give them. That's the problem. I think that as a leader, it's about giving people what they need and giving them what they need is going to change what it is that they have a taste and a desire for. So do you think I'm going to ask you about that one song Being from where you're from if, if what you're proposing is the truth That song doesn't exist You think that's a good thing? Back that ass up If that song didn't exist Now this is me having a relationship with Juvenile with, Legend with, with his Yeah like literally One like, of the goats Like 400 Degrees One of my favorite albums of all time I'm cool with just Bro that was the soundtrack to our lifestyle sure. Growing yeah. up in New Orleans You know what I mean I think that there's a different version Of Back That Thing Up That could have come out That could have been just as powerful Okay. Literally. Same beat, same hook, same cadence, you heard me? That could have been just as powerful. And I think that our world doesn't normalize that that's even a possibility. And we just say, well, it just had to be this, this, this one song because we can't even imagine something being that powerful uh, if it wasn't that. But, bro, thankfully, there's artists who have come along, myself being one right, of them, right. that's showing, like, wait. This can be a hit. This song can get played by the masses and people loving this song, but it has a different vibe to it. Same same vibe in some ways, but it doesn't have to all the way dip into uh, the lowest level of who we are. I think 
what's also very like easy. Summertime by Will Smith, not to cut you off. Summertime. Summertime by Will Smith. Ain't that a classic you, song? I don't know if you could throw ass to summertime though. Okay. Is there a song that you could throw booty to that is 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 not uh all the way in the juvie back that thing up lane? Is there a song you could throw booty? Not not that you could throw because I'm not trying to see no, you no, throw no. booty thank at you, thank all. You respectfully, of course. Not. Yeah. Uh, um, is there? Thank you. Let, let's go through the catalogs. Let's see. Yay, uh, Cole, Wait. Kendrick, Jay Z, Nas. I mean, I'm not even, those aren't even club artists. I'm thinking like the big club records of all time. Okay, the big club records. Bro, there's several, Kev. Nelly. EI, but it's getting hot in here, so Drop take off all your, your clothes. Eagle, uh, right, right. I, I mean, you right. talking about getting naked? I mean, right. Uh, I, I'm going to have to make the song then. I'm going to have to make. I'm going to have to make it, bro. But. <laughs> so, 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 so listen, I, I think the other answer to this is one, it's not realistic to think that like, like that's even like a real possibility. I think what is realistic is guys like yourself, guys like Kendrick inspiring people to be like, oh, we ain't got to do it this way. And I think that this is the highest version of people paying attention and being like, hmm. That's why I said like this, somehow this beef with Drake has turned, like opened up a lot of fans eyes to being like, Oh, shit. Mm. And I think the problem there is, though, Kendrick is a generationally talented human being. Mm -hmm. uh, and not everyone's as talented as Kendrick Lamar, where people will overlook what they might want to hear to be like, oh, this shit is just so good. It's undeniable. That I can't even deny it. Mm -hmm. Because think of all the people who are hating on Kendrick. Even when Euphoria dropped, and I think Euphoria is the best record out of all the disses, it was like they didn't have, they didn't really be like, okay, Kendrick, until Not Like Us came out, because Not Like Us was easier on the ears. You could dance to it, club you could records. Dance to yeah. it. There you go. Oh, I thought of a record, by the way, that, that people uh, throw booty to. Um, they got a different vibe. Um, nice for what by Drake. Fair enough. Yeah, great record, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's got the and it's the New Orleans sound, the New Orleans bounce. You yeah, feel me? Um, but I'm just curious, like, like th I think that would to me be the the answer is like whatever's happening right now with this moment of music is hoping that it can help inspire artists to change and or artists who are doing that type of music. Uh, Kenny Mason from Atlanta. Uh, I mean, there's so many dope artists who are just crazy dope. Like maybe now like people might give them a real chance. Even like a guy like Denzel Curry, who I think is so is like an alien. You know what I'm saying? Now, Denzel Curry isn't necessarily making like, you know, Christian rap or anything, but like he's so artistically unique as an artist where he could do so many different things that like, you know, he's got platinum records too. Shout out to him. But, you know, I would like to see him be like up there with the Drakes of the world or, you know, mm. um, and we can go on and on about artists who are dope. Mm. Um, but, but I think that that's kind of, we're in this space where it's like, okay, well the guy doing it at the highest level is an alien. Mm. And really the other guy who's doing it at that level is J Cole, who's mm. also an alien mm. And, and I say this because those are the two guys who are a part of the big three and have kind of been a part of like, it's them two and Drake. And, sh you know, listen, Drake also is an alien. Let's be clear. Drake is one of the greatest artists who's ever lived. Um, you know, I think that with Kendrick and Cole being so prominent throughout the culture throughout all these years, like which, what's common, the commonality about both of them is that they are the, conscious of what they're putting into the world. Mm-hmm. And they're two of the bi biggest three. Mm -hmm. There you go. Two so, thirds of the big three is super conscious super about super conscious and super in, it, it. super purpose with their intent on everything they do. Whether it's an artist they sign, whether it's a verse that they drop, even I think back to the J Cole conversation where he tried to sit down with Little Pump, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and try to explain to Little Pump what was probably going to happen with his career, and mm -hmm. it ended up happening. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that you know, again, like I hope that this sparks more artists who are inspired by. Kendrick then maybe inspired by mm. op killing music. Mm, there you go. There you go. Absolutely. But I don't know. We we were we probably won't see that for a few three, four, five years. But I think we're seeing it right now. I think we're seeing it right now, bro. Like I said, I just put my song out yesterday called Call It Like It Is. Yeah. And it's me responding to Kendrick and showing him love for A D1. I want to make sure that more people know who 
who you are, you know what I'm saying, by, by saying that in the song. So then it's up to me saying, bet, the shift is happening right now. I'm clearly a part of this shift. Yeah. So when I get the baton, I got to do what I do. So I hit him with, what's the point of writing all of these lyrics? If I'm rapping to an audience that ain't trying to hear it. They'd rather me blow a bag than rap about building wealth. They'd rather me get some brain than rap about mental health. Don't censor me. Eventually, try to make sense of me. I don't need your dollars. I need you to think sensibly. You feel good now that you vegan. <laughs> That's funny. If you're still promoting garbage, you're just a healthy dummy. My city don't even love me. I'm calling it how it is. I'm a threat to the power structure, brainwashing our kids, fracturing all the egos of illegitimate heroes. I only look up to one man, because he died, then he rose. I keep it too real, because life don't last too long. If everybody likes me, I'm doing something too wrong. Maybe in time, they'll appreciate my words like Nipsey. Till then, I'm going to see how far keeping it real gets me. So call it like it is. Call it what it ain't. Call it what you want. No, I ain't on that drink. I'm speaking from the soul. And I don't care who feel it Yeah, hip-hop is dead And y'all the ones who killed it No, I am not impressed And I say that with my chest Man Come on, man Come on, man What are your thoughts on the whole Diddy situation? Crazy situation, by the way And yeah. also, also A lot of people knew that that shit was going on So all the people who knew that it was going on They scared right now A lot of people who enabled it There you go They're probably going to jail You think they'll go to jail? If, she, if he gets convicted Now, I don't, I don't know I'm not super educated to what was in the uh, indictment because I didn't read it. Uh, and, I, and I'd like to point out that there are the definition, I think, of sex trafficking is is having someone travel over state lines for the purpose of sexual activities, I think. And, okay. and a lot of rappers are guilty of that. Flying girls. Flying out girls out. Um, but I, 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 I know they said that they got tons of video. Mm -hmm. of a lot of Apparently these. Apparently he was taping all of this. He stuff. was taping everything on some Epstein type shit. They uh, called it freak offs. Freak offs. Had hundred bottles of lube. All kind of craziness. But he had a team. Mm -hmm. He had security. Mm -hmm. He had people around him. He had assistants. Who certainly, if there was serious crimes being committed, mm -hmm. people being raped, I don't know, that are a part of that. Mm -hmm. So those people are freaking out. Mm-hmm. Well, if all of this happened, may justice prevail. Yeah. Let the empire crumble. You know what I mean? They'll be all right. God, God will still love. It's like we're like, like, like Diddy was kind of the epitome of like hip hop entrepreneurship our whole Absolutely. life. Absolutely. He was the epitome of black excellence. Right. And in, in our community, you know, this is black excellence. The rock. Yeah. Bad boy, yeah. I mean. So we need to get rid of this old idea we had of what black excellence looked like. Right. But we need to get rid of this old idea we had of what. Oh, this is what a mogul looks like, and this is somebody to aspire Even Russell, to be Russell like. Russell Simmons has some pretty crazy allegations against him. Yeah. Right, and whatever happened with that? Did he... I just watched that documentary on HBO, and then I know he, he went to Bali. Yeah. And the speculation is, I again, I don't know. All, I just know that the speculation is he went there because they don't have extradition laws. Really? But that's... Okay. I don't know if that's why he went there. Right. But So all the people we, look, we grew up looking up to, did he? You see what's going on with him, fighting for his life right now. Russell Simmons, they said, homie, they went to Bali, you heard me? Maybe trying to jump ship right. so they can't get him. Dame Dash, you heard me? They talking about Dame going through it right now. Broke. Dame said he's broke. You know whether. You know what? One thing, though, I do respect about what Dame said. Hmm. He said, when you chase your dream, because I've been around Dame, and I feel like he truly is like a... Like, he really is like a, he got big dreams, bro. And he said, when you chase your dreams to the point when, when that I chase my dreams, when they don't work out, you can end up broke. Mm. So, you know, I wouldn't put, I haven't heard anything crazy about Dame in terms of like, you know, any, anything legally wrong he was doing. I just think Dame just, bro, like he, he took some big chances on certain shit that didn't work out. You know? Suge Knight was a mogul. Suge Knight is in, in prison. In prison. Yeah. There's so many different people that. At this point, y'all... But then there's Jay-Z, who's the other side of that, who's obviously, you know, he's Jay-Z, mm -hmm. you know? I think the whole point, though, is that the idea that we had in our mind of what a mogul had to look like and what you had to do to become a mogul, let's throw all that out. And let's just say you definitely got to work hard right. to become a mogul. But hopefully for somebody watching this, you the next mogul. And you can come up with your own blueprint of what it looks like. Because everything that we were taught in our generation, man, we seeing that... That stuff is not working out in the long run hmm. for a lot of these people. And the same thing with artists, man. We should have more artists who can make it normal to 
age gracefully and to evolve gracefully. You know, I love when I see OGs like Styles P. You heard right. me? Who, man. Opening he, juice bars, come, sharing games. Come on, man. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Styles P. I love when I see that, right. bro. I love when I see people who... Like boldly embrace. I love my man Murs out here in Merz LA. Is, you I love Murs, man. Yeah, bro. Like, you guys put an album out together, right? Yeah, we put yeah. an album out together. Yeah, yeah like that's that's my brother right yeah. there. I love when I love when I see my brother Lupe Fiasco. You heard me? Yeah. Who? One, by the way, when it comes to just rapping, come on, man, might be the goat for real. Goat status, man. Jesus. Yeah, I don't know if Lupe Re- got, got real got, Jedi, real alien. I don't, I don't know if Lupe even got like the energy to dedicate to. Bro, like, imagine like, if he applied himself that, but to. Come on, bro. Man. That Easy. album Samurai Crazy. Bro. I didn't seen it with my own two nah, eyes. L- Lupe fuck. teaches at MIT and I teach at Tufts University. They're five minutes apart. You hear me? Fucking Lupe, dude. Yeah, bro. Just go listen to murals. It's like nine minutes of just come on, man. excellence. Yeah. Like, and these is my real friends right. that I all three of them that I just named, these is my real friends. Man, even even back home in New Orleans, my man Currency, you know what I'm saying? Spit a shot, spit a yeah. Yeah, like like my man Currency, just to see that this man has succeeded on such a level his own terms too on his own terms yeah. but it's still somebody who uh, just be hanging out amidst yeah. the people you know what i mean there are examples in our culture to where you don't have to crash out right as you get older or you don't have to prostitute your integrity to try to stay relevant with the teenagers right and we need more of that man because we starting to have it to where we're gonna have just as many rappers in their 30s 40s and 50s as we got in their 20s and their teens oh, what's happening Damn near now. Exactly. And who you think is supposed to be setting the tone for right. the culture? The older rappers. I think that's why it's important that Kendrick's having this moment because I also feel like, you know, my main gripe about Drake forever has been like, I just, I don't feel like he's ever expressed a real opinion on many social issues in his entire career. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't know how he feels about certain shit, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's never really taken a content risk. Mm. A risk? I, I, I can't associate anything in Drake's catalog with he's the word safe. like that was risky. He's very safe. Right. Even and, this just what he's rapping about. Right. It's girls, it's bitches, it's money, it's So when you put business over impact, you'll never take a risk. Because risks aren't good for business when business like is Michael Jordan boom. said he's never come out about politics because both sides buy his shoes. Correct. And I, okay, that's fine. And Correct. I feel like Drake's kind of similar. That's why you got to respect uh, Steph Curry and the LeBron James. Or Jalen Brown. Or they Kyrie say, Irving. Yeah, yeah. All, all of the above. Kyrie Irving is standing on shit. Cost him a Nike deal, bro. Yeah, yeah. Straight up. Straight up. So, salute to all them brothers in athletics. So, I'm going to tell you something I came up with, Kev. I started this January 1st of this year. It's a solution to the problems that I see in the culture. It's called the Platinum Pledge, right? We got Platinum Records on the wall in this studio yeah. and everything. Platinum, I turned it into an acronym that stands for People Leading a Transformation Involving Newly Unified Mindsets. The Platinum Pledge simply says this is to unify the artists, the fans, and the execs in the industry who agree that we no longer need to glorify, keyword glorify, murder, drug dealing, drug use, disrespecting women, and sexual irresponsibility in our music, right? In doing that and putting that out there, Bro, I got so many thousands of people who have signed this. I put it on my website. It takes two seconds for people to sign it. That right there is showing me how many people are ready to be a part of this shift, right? So now what I'm about to do is take it into phase two to where all these massive amounts of people, Charlemagne then said, I agree with that. I salute that. I pledge allegiance to that D. I'm rocking with that, da-da-da. So many tastemakers, artists, and everybody are ready for this shift that now we have to know what can hip-hop look like and let's confront some of these uncomfortable truths about the reality of our culture and figure out what it can look like with um, the extermination of the negative toxic elements. And that might affect some people's bottom line. That might affect some people's streams. That might affect some people's taste buds and what they've been auto-programmed to listen to and to support and to like. But if you really care about the betterment of our people, and when I say our people, meaning humanity, right. period, we who have signed the Platinum Pledge feel like, man, this is the way to go. So that's, yeah. You know what? I just thought of something, too. I think one of the biggest problems we have is going to end up. So if, if Diddy gets convicted, a lot of people who were just ju- just trying to keep their job are going to go to jail, too. But, you know, this music industry is filled with people just trying to keep their job. That's a fact. That's a fact. If you're an A&R, 
That's a fact. If you're a EVP, mm-hmm. you're just trying to keep your job. So they put their integrity in the background. No, and they're they, just and trying and to they, produce results. Yeah, they just, they just to, want to put numbers on the board. That's what I'm saying. Their integrity so can, is in the background and, they, yeah. and, and the income. So they can the get another year in the, board, in the building. Another year in the building. So that's the problem. So, bro, we gotta. how do we fix that? I don't know, man. I don't know. Listen, it's, I'm going to tell you this. And I'm going to tell you this, Elliot Grange running uh, Atlantic is not helping. It's not going to help. Cause he, and his daddy run uh, Universal. Yeah, it's a problem. Dog. It's a problem. Dog. Well, listen. That's the same guy who signed 6 9 Dog. Listen, brother. Ever since I've been knowing you, you've been in the media. You have a platform. I would just say, I would say and pray, you know what I'm saying? That like, man, God, like bless my brother Bootleg Kev to where all this knowledge that he has, that he knows that there has to be a level of integrity that comes along with managing this platform. Because people for clicks and likes will get up here and say and do Well, that's what I'll say about my shit, bro, is I will, I will, I've never, you know, anytime I've had an artist on um, that is controversial, for whatever, you know, especially... You know, I saw the Young Boy interviews. Yeah, shout out to Young Boy. But, like, you know, in terms of that, like, I, I, I you know, like, I've interviewed Sexy Red, and we had fun, and and, and, and it was funny, and it was, mm-hmm. you know... But in terms of, like, the, the street shit, the violent shit, like, mm-hmm. I try to make sure that whatever I do here is is not adding on to any of that. Thank you. Or at least trying to present the idea solutions, you know, like... Thank you. So that's kind of like my, you know, in the world in which our media is adding on... To tension, adding on to beefs, beefs. conflicts. Mm-hmm. I just don't want anybody to ever be like, man, I heard you say some crazy shit on the Bootleg Kev podcast. Mm-hmm. And then someone loses, like, you know, like loses their life. Like, I'm good, dog. Like, I don't want that shit on my heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and it's not worth the. Thank you. Bro. It's not worth the views. The extra little clicks. Nah, it ain't right. worth it. it ain't Thank worth it. you. Dog got goosebumps under my jacket because this a man in media who with that lit that seems small what you just said. But that right there wouldn't give an open platform to people who want to come on here and basically announce that they about to kill their op soon. Yeah, like I just check. had X rated on the show who is a legendary independent rapper, signed to Tech Nine now. But his hood and Mozzie's hood, they beef. Mm. And I I had a conversation about Mozzie with X-Rated on camera. He said, look, I got goosebumps. Yep. He's like, we're, for, we're both from Sacramento. This man got nominated for a Grammy. Like, we need to, like, be happy about that. And, like, Mozzie reposted it. So it's like, I don't know if that's, like, going to change their neighborhood's problems. But if it means those two guys talk who haven't talked. And they don't have direct beef with each other. Let's be clear. It's just the But hood. it's just like, you know, but, but there is a lot of that going on in that town. Yep. So, you know, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, no, definitely, bro. Right. Feel good about that, bro. It's not even about feeling good about it. It's just like, yo, like, let's not add to this shit. Like, yo, like, the content, like you said, like I said, bro, the content culture we're in, it's, we are content addicted, bro. Whether it's Instagram or YouTube, um, I can't work out with a YouTube without a YouTube or a podcast playing. I always mm. have to have something playing. Mm. We're all addicted to. For me, it's fantasy football talk or mm. political shit or whatever. Mm. We're the content culture we live in Dog. is not good for humanity on all fronts, not just hip hop, but on all fronts. Dog, I had a Christian rapper hit me up before and suggest that we fake having a rap beef. Which is crazy. A Christian rapper, dog, hit me up and faked that we have a rap beef and proposed that to me. And I was like, brother, I said, the problem with that is your fans, they going to pray for me. My fans, they going to come for you. You yeah. heard me? So we can't be faking nothing because where I'm from, you that don't play goes, with yeah. no rap beef. And yeah, clearly yeah, yeah. you're doing this because you feel like this is going to get some extra attention. Which is some extra cr- Which is very unchristian like. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. It's and dog, so when I done seen that. I echo what you're saying about we in such a content culture. I got people who will have issues with one another, right? And it's like, oh, we got issues. Clearly, if we have issues with one another and if we truly care about the personal relationship and getting that back right, the first conversation we have probably shouldn't be on camera. Of course not. But I got people that's hitting me up like, yeah, yeah, let's talk about our issues on camera. That's not how, that's not how the real world works. Not everything is meant for content, man. I knew I wasn't crazy, dog. No, 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 for sure. I mean, I see it all the time where I'm just like, it's it's just like, dog, like it's exhausting. Everybody's got a camera guy and it's just like, yo, like not everything's got to be documented. Like this is, but this is the world we're in, bro. It's like, it, it, it's, it's unfortunate. It is what it is. Uh, for you, would you say that you've, 
I, I just interviewed a, a dude named Miles Minnick, who's a Christian that's rapper. That's my little brother. You yeah. know, he on my, uh, my, my album Uno that came out a year ago. Okay, okay. He, yeah, that's my little brother. Uh, would you say, I wouldn't consider you a Christian rapper. I consider you a rapper that happens to be Christian. Is that... Yeah, brother. All them titles and and the subtitles the boxes, and what all that, brother. Yeah. I, I'm like, hey, I got into this game. You just do you as and a whatever, dude that's just yeah, trying to make impact. Sure. So you know what I call? It? I call it purpose driven rap. That's Which what I is make. Dope. Yeah, I make purpose driven. rap. I was gonna say for you, do you feel like there's? I mean, you're seeing it. You know, I, I, we talked about like there's people who are putting out amazing content that is positive. Like like La Russell to me is a shining beaming light of amazingness in our music industry. And that's why I try to shout him out whenever I can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we about to drive a song again. Yeah. Dude, that's... we might look back five years from now and be like, yo, that little motherfucker from Vallejo really might've changed the rap game. Mm, mm, mm. The business on, model, man. at least. Come on, man. That... Um, yes. I love, I love it. But who are some of the other artists that you feel like are, are kind of, you know, in, 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 in a line with kind of what you're saying, like mm, what, what, the purpose driven. Yeah. Rap. Yeah. Bro, there's so many artists. Some are Christians, and some are just people that are out here trying to make progress in this world and humanity, right? right? So, one, uh, you talked about you you got a relationship with Fredo. Well, one of Fredo's best friends is named uh, Joe Scott. Okay. That's my other former student. Okay. From from BR, from Baker, exactly, you know, representing the Baton Rouge area. Brother, he's a beast. I guarantee you he about to, he about to take off, you hear me? About to really take off. Right. Like, that's a dude who I've been rooting for for the longest. And I'm like, ah, you almost there. You almost there. You almost there. Another brother who, man, we just got kindred spirits. So me and this dude, um, you know, behind the scenes, we got a real good relationship. Dizzy Wright. I love Dizzy, man. Man. So I've known that kid since he was going by Dizzy D. I, you know, it's crazy. I judged a talent show when I lived in Vegas. I used to do radio in Vegas. He won the talent show at, at Chic Shoes. It was like 2010. For real? Yeah. And he was doing a talent show. He was going by Dizzy D. Flashy. Really? Yeah. That's my brother for real. I love Dizzy, man. Really? Yeah. Okay. So Dizzy, Dizzy is a dude who I see him from afar, and I see him welcoming the evolution as he grows and matures. For sure. He, like, he putting out more music than ever as he's growing wiser than ever. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I see that, and, I, and I'm like, ugh, that's, that's what we need more of in this game. Yeah. You feel me? My dude Price, too. Shout out to Price Tag, formerly Auto Push. Price is doing his thing, man. Price is pushing a you know he's pushing good shit man shout out to price for real yeah price is dope yeah he uh he he he, he uh, you remember audio push yes of course yeah so price is from audio push but he's been a solo artist for like four years now but he's for real? he's hard yeah he's hard. then we got another brother he from my uh he from my state named kieran the light you heard me okay he a christian artist okay kieran the light man same thing he's featured on my album that i put out recently i love that little dude you know what i'm saying just somebody who is unapologetic about knowing his purpose in this game you heard me and him saying come on man like i'm 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 doing it whether y'all not like me or not. I'm on a bigger mission. You feel right. me? Like, that's the type of people that no matter what it is. Oh, I'm about to go on tour with, uh, I mean, he been in the game forever, but Brother Ali. Shout out to him. I'm about to go on tour with him. Brother Ali's a fucking legend. Bro, uh, but the thing about being a legend nowadays is you could be a legend and still be unknown by other people. For, no, brother. That's I, the beautiful part. I, Bro, they don't know about Brother. No. No. White Van Music, man. Shout out to Jake One. That, 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 what was that song? The Truth with Freeway? That shit was crazy. Mm, mm. So, Shout out yeah. to Brother Ali, man. Yeah. That's my, dope. My brother uh, my brother Mac from New Orleans, who used to be with No, no Limit. Limit. Yeah. yeah like I Mac. had his album, Shell Shocked. You did? Yeah. We all did. Yeah. It I had all the No Limit albums. My yeah. whole fucking CD rack in my room, I felt like for, it was all them colorful ass jewel cases. You was more of a No Limit or a Cash Money dude? 100% No Limit. Okay. Uh, you, not even close. Really? I had No Limit chain and everything really ghetto dope was like the first the first masterpiece i owned was the ice cream man shit with the white cover mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh because no limit was first they were yeah they, they, ghetto yeah. dope was like yeah ghetto d's like dog i know that pretty much that whole album by the by, like by heart like that's one of my favorite albums ever i kind of because they had like their little conflict i kind of shunned cash money low-key but it was just so good that you had to be okay. like Bro, that's how powerful rap is. 400 degrees, have a, but 400 have, degrees was just so good that you were like... You couldn't deny it. I mean... But for people who try to tell me on these podcasts all around the country, it's just entertainment. Rap music had a white dude growing up... Where at? 
Where? Oh, oh, in Phoenix. In, in Phoenix, saying, man, I ain't rocking with cash money just on the strength of how much I am rocking with no limit. That's the power For of music. Sure. I ain't never met none of them, but, but sit there. Bro, I, had, I had a fucking no limit. I had the no limit jersey. Come on. I saved so much money to buy that bitch. It was like $100. Yeah, I, I thought Silk the Shocker was like so hard as a kid, bro. Like, charge it to the game and the 504 boys, and of course, Mystical, Unpredictable. And mm. what was the album with I Smell Smoke? The second, uh, yo, Mystical was so tough. Mm. Oh. Mm. That Mystical album with I Smell Smoke, I think it was called Unpredictable, actually. Um, yeah, Unpredictable. Fucking crazy. That was, that was with, the, uh, with the puzzle pieces? No, that was um, Unpredictable, was the one after that. Okay. But nah, Mystical was crazy. Yeah, bro. Turned out he, you know, probably not the best guy. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, these are our heroes. Hey, man. Hey, man. Shout out to Diddy. Uh, anyway, look, man. <laughs> uh, people are able to buy and support what you're doing on D1Music.com? D-E-E, the number one music.com. Not only do I have, oh, uh, you know what? It's over there. I got a children's book I wrote. It's a hip-hop children's book. You heard me? It's called David Found His Slingshot. So that's on the... Uh, on the website, it ain't gonna take number five seconds. Go second. grab Hold it, on. man. Go grab it. Show off the book, man. Yeah. I wanna, yeah, that's hard. Yeah. Grab it. How old are your kids? Uh, I got a 10 year old and a 19 year old. Okay. Word. So, this the book right here. David found his slingshot. The whole book rhymes. It's a hip hop book, but it's an anti bullying children's book. Dope. Because I used to get bullied when I was in kindergarten in New Orleans. And, you know, in this age of ops, this era of everybody being beefed out, Ironically, me and my former bully are best friends to this day. Really? And it talks about how hip hop, I don't want to get a whole book away, but hip hop actually played a role in us becoming best friends. So I wanted to take my story, put it out there. Um, so that's on my website, d1music.com. Uh, I just put my new album loaded out right now. Um, you should, did you get, like, when you write a book like this, mm -hmm. obviously you're selling it and you're copying it, like you're, you're, you're printing these out yourself. Yes, sir. Um, do people reach out to try to do like a because for people who don't know the author game is like the record deal game like you get an advance to write a book mm -hmm. like yo take this this yo you take this to the fucking Barnes and Nobles man that part that part yeah right now I'm the dude that's been saying Barnes and Nobles um, y'all taking too big of a cut so, oh, I don't doubt they are. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm very ignorant to that, except for I know that authors get advances the way rappers get advances. Yeah, and I chose to take no advance, bet on myself. and. Uh, but this is a dope I message that... I done went underground platinum with this in the right. past year. Kev, like, brother, I'm not no materialistic dude. I'm not no flashy dude. But just so y'all know, by the grace of God... I'm not hurting at all. So That's I don't cool. want people to think that like D1 got a good heart, but does it really like pay off? Yes. Yes. It pays to be independent. It pays to keep your integrity. It pays to keep God first. And it pays to be dope at what you do. So I got an uh, uh, underground platinum uh, children's book. I got the number two album in the world on iTunes loaded. That's out right now. About to go on tour. Professor at Tufts University, fellow at Harvard University, and all this came from rapping, man. That's crazy that you you started as a teacher, as a middle and, school teacher, and now you're a professor. <laughs> yeah, full circle, my G. And ask Fredo next time you talk to him. I was Mr. Augustine. Fredo just put a country song out. Fredo is one of the most talented artists in the world, for bro. sure. He I be sending Fredo. me these songs, bro, and I just be like. How does your brain work like this to yeah. be able to come up with these type of things, bro? Like, for it's, sure. it's crazy, man. All I'm a, good, man. I'm going to give you this. Yeah, oh, yeah. thank you, brother. I'm going to autograph it for you. Even this if is it's great. Just, yeah, brother. So I do book readings all over the country. I go to schools. And because I'm a rapper, I wrote the book like I was writing a song. Right. So I'm able to not only read the book, but like perform the book while I'm reading it to the kids, man. That's dope. It's amazing, bro. So Congrats on everything. Thank man. you, brother. And um, what else can I say? Yeah, the new single is out, uh, Call It Like It Is. Uh, shout out to Kendrick Lamar. Have man. you talked to Kendrick since the shout out? I haven't talked to him. I just hit him on social media and right. was like, brother... Uh, you just changed my life. Why don't you? Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 feel, I mean, obviously, you guys are part of the same era. Mm -hmm. People, we, we met at Paid Dues in 2011. Yeah, you guys are the same. Literally. The blog era. Literally, bro. You guys are products of the blog era. Literally. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Bro. All these years later. Bro, li life is great, brother. Salute to that man for, yeah. for what it is that he's doing and trying to do in hip hop. And I just. Uh, I want Kendrick to know that I'm praying for him. I saw what you said about Joe Budden on the song, and obviously you said that he's he's you know. W would you ever go on his sh show and talk to him? I would love to go on Joe Budden's show. Would they? Would you even? Think, I feel like it's one thing to like 
they should open their, like, I feel like if you're going to be very critical of somebody, give mm-hmm. them the opportunity to come and have, mm-hmm. a, have a civil discussion. Yeah, maybe Joe Budden will listen to this and be like, all right, cool. But um, I would love to have that because communication in this culture will lead to unification. It's okay to have a difference of opinion. And there's stuff. a lot of nuance left out when it comes to tweets and online back and forth. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure you and Rick Ross would have an amazing conversation if there weren't cameras rolling and it was just you and him in a room. That part. Man... You know, I pray to God that that can happen if yeah. it's meant to. I don't want right. to force it either. Right. I don't want to force it. But um, uh, it could be off camera. Like, off camera is totally fine with any of these guys. Because well, I think w- that's when the egos get dropped. And that's not, that's not a Rick Ross-specific critique. That's just everybody. When you're not on camera, your ego isn't necessarily um, on full display. Mm. You know what? There's enough mutual people in the industry who know me and Joe Budden and who know me and Rick Ross. I already been talking to Jim Jones. Um, oh, Jim's had, gr- yeah, Jim's a good guy, man. Yeah, we had, you know, back and forth yeah. uh, publicly, but we, we formed a really cool uh, relationship. That's so, dope. What about Meek? Uh, haven't talked to Meek, and I know a lot of people who know Meek. Um, I think Meek's got a, a, I feel like he's got good intention. I feel like he wants to do good. I know he has a good heart, yeah. man. And, and you know who I want to shout out? This is the most random shout out ever, but one of Meek's artists... Young brother named Kerr. Mm-hmm. You heard of him? I haven't heard K-U-R. of him. K-U-R. Psh, that dude is talented, bro. That dude is talented. And I, I hit him up recently just on some like, oh, like, just ran across your content, brother. And like, I'm moved by that. And then found out after, he's like, oh, he signed to me. Right. But it's like, bro, we all connected one way or another, right. man. So For sure. That's it, bro. There it is, man. Well, I appreciate you pulling Thank up, you, brother. Kev. Yes, sir. Thank D1. you, my G. My Much God. love.